Hi, hello, and welcome. I'm definitely not Sebe, and you're watching the Zeros to Hero series, where I invite the lowest rated applicants to my M Plus runs for fun. I'm just going to remind you real quick, you can vote for which class I play in the next season by going to the poll at the top of the description. Make sure you do that. In a few more days, I will release a poll for which spec, and then we'll know what I play. So keep an eye out for that. In this episode, we'll catch you up on some dungeons I did while it was still Fortified Week. Then we're going to open up the vault and do a run on this current week, which is Tyrannical Entangling and, what was it, Bursting? Something like that. Anyway. I did four dungeons. One of them was a 13 rise. The tank wasn't exactly sure what all could be pulled, so they pulled absolutely everything, you know, to be sure, I guess. This would not have been much of an issue if people were interrupting the nasty AoE, but not many interrupts were done. Oh, also, we randomly used Bloodlust after almost wiping, after the biggest part of the pull was already done, so I, I don't know what was going on there. In the sand clearing room, the tank had a lot of aggro issues, like in the rest of the run. But the sand room is an aggro nightmare at the best of times, so I went down a couple of times, but I had a really clutch lay on hands on the healer, so that made up for it in style points. Speaking of clutch, on the last boss I did something pretty cool. I recognized that the priest kicked the bucket and the priest was the designated orb soaker, so I had to make sure that the orb gets soaked. With the priest dead, it had to go on to the hunter. So I went and I hugged the hunter until the orb came down, so I could stand in the circle and stagger one of the orbs since the hunter had been going full pew pew and wasn't aware that he had the soak. This likely saved our butts. Up next was a 13 Everbloom, and it was a decently smooth run, though the mage was very very new and unsure how to really execute their rotation, so they their damage was lackluster. That said, the tank made me laugh when he popped himself and basically wiped us out near the start of the dungeon. I had a few clutch lay on hands, those always feel fun. The only other issues that we really had were that the last boss was a bit hectic because a few people were not stepping on any of the plants, but that wasn't a big deal since it was fortified so the boss fights weren't too scary. Four paladins and a hunter walk into a black rook hold. No, it's not a bad joke, that's basically what happened. The tank was inexperienced or overly cautious or watching Netflix on the other monitor. They did very little damage and as a consequence they didn't really hold aggro in most of the pulls. This didn't make the run impossible, but it did slow it down quite a bit. It probably didn't help that I had to go grab a delivery in the middle of the run, but Danny's nuggies simply cannot wait. It was all worth it in the end because the hunter got a ring they didn't need and let me have it when I asked for it, so yay. And finally we have a 13 throne of the tithes that was a bit slow because the elemental shaman wasn't doing all that much damage, but nothing the fire mage from Everbloom didn't prepare me for. The tank had some spicy pulls and tactics, for example they pulled a ravager into a group of three casters right as the doggos came around. This forced me to bop one of the priests, sack the tank to help them survive the bleed from the doggos, and bubble myself just so I don't die. That was a spicy pull. A spicy tactic was getting themselves stuck in a corner of the second boss, putting the boss out of my reach and themselves in quite a bit of danger. And of course, a throne run isn't a throne run without a tank pulling one of the swell mobs with a crap ton of little corruptions there, ready to debuff us all into an early grave. Luckily I had my wits about me and I didn't do any AoE damage until after the first swell cast went through, after which I dropped all my DPS, killed all the small corruptions, and the debuff went away before the next cast of swell. Quite proud of that one honestly. Another trademark of a throne run is people not clearing the ink off the ground when they're targeted by the beam on the last boss. But luckily we managed to kill it regardless because it was fortified. Oh, and we did a Wakerest Manor 13 as well, but I forgot about that one to be honest because it was such a smooth run that I didn't get traumatized by it. With that, you're all caught up, so let's see what's in the vault. Alrighty, let's generate some loot for retribution. Okay, so we have a ring with haste versatility, quite a bit of versatility. I already have two decent rings, so I don't really care about this ring. We have a nice ooh, hero tier. Mm, mirror of Fractured Tomorrows. It's a very long cooldown though. 3.5k of my highest secondary stat, what would that be anyway? It seems like that would be haste. Hmm. 3.5k haste on a 3 minute cooldown. Basically every third of Engine Wrath I would have a bunch of extra haste. I don't know. Is that worth it? I'd actually kind of rather have these champion pieces instead of veteran pieces. That could be nice. I have champion shoulders. What's this? These are hero gloves that I could terrify. Hmm. These are actually really nice gloves with crit and verse. I might actually just go for terrifying these shoulders. So I have champion tier, tier piece, tier set, shoulders tier of tier ifying if I terrify these into tier. What? And these gloves would be hero up from veteran with crit verse. So that would be nice. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these hero tier gloves and then I'm going to terrify or catalyze or whatever you want to call it, the shoulders that I have that are currently not a tier set piece. So yeah, there we go. We got some hero tier gloves. This is quite nice. A 16 item level increase as well. Quite juicy. There we go. I'm not going to equip them just yet. I have to go to the cataclysm. Cataclysm? What? Catalyzing place. The cataclysm place 
we're gonna go to the maelstrom in the middle of the continent continent what ocean whatever man i am lost in the sauce today i was talking about the maelstrom here but that's not really where the cataclysm took place i guess that's where it started because deathwing kind of you know leapt up out of there anyway we're getting sidetracked big time we're gonna terrify the shoulders and we're going to equip the gloves this will mess up our transmog but we're going to very quickly repair the transmog beautiful and now i'm at 464 item level that's another item level gained from a 16 item level upgrade for the gloves now another thing i need to do is i need to remake all of my macros because as you can see i'm missing quite a few abilities such as lay on hands that should be over here and i'm missing word of glory and i'm missing some other stuff all of those i need to make new macros for because i got decided to get rid of my a macro because it was just breaking it just straight up didn't work i do not recommend the add-on anymore it's just not something <laughs> you want to have going on so i'm going to quickly make those and then i guess we will do what did i get 17 throne of the tides with bursting and tangling that's gonna suck we'll see what happens i'll talk to you when i start recruiting well it's been quite a while since i've had anyone apply oh goody goody we have two people that applied one of them is a priest healer for bursting yes please and i'll take this other person because they're even lower rated i'm still the lowest rated person but i'm running into an issue of not being able to really pick people that are lower rated now that i have a healer i might have a bit of a chance to actually pick between people oh see the second you have a healer there's more people interested between these two the mage is lower rated so i'm going to go for the mage and now we just need to wait for a tank i'm thinking about switching to holy just so that i can maybe get more applicants and that way i can actually pick the lowest rated person instead of just inviting a person who's slightly less rated than whoever it is that applied alongside them it's extremely rare that I have more than one applicant waiting. So this series is kind of, uh, how should I say it, pointless. And I'd also be learning a bit about holy because I really just know the bare basics, which is spam the crap out of holy shock and don't sit there spamming flash of light. I'll give it some thought. You guys let me know what you think. 482 2.8k rated tank. Oh, I'm just gonna wait for a minute and really hope that somebody else applies because this feels like a free clear if I invite them, to be honest with you. Although they do seem to be a main healer and they've played this character is DPS so far looking at the uh, Rio thing as you can see how the tank icon is a little bit faded and the DPS sword icon is much more prominent I can't wait for too long because the rest of the group is going to be annoyed about me not inviting the tank and they canceled absolving me of any responsibility love it and we have a 1.9k rated 475 brewmaster brewmasters I haven't seen many brewmasters who played mostly healer and a bit of tanking so let's let's grab them and see how that goes 2.8k main they're decently rated they seem to be just like an alt or whatever let's see how this goes we're quickly going to make a uh, macro that's going to cast hold on a copy character name there we go it's going to cast uh what's this thing called blessing of freedom not freedom but freedom at our tank that way i can get them out of the which we'll call it entangling quite useful macro to have hold on ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, there we go blessing of freedom and uh i will cast blessing of freedom thank every entangling for no reason to move mobs there we go hopefully that they do take care of that or take that into consideration when they're moving the mobs around they could also give themselves tiger's fear or tiger's lust sorry tiger's lust would remove it for themselves but this way they get the save a global makes it a bit easier for them they're saying they have tiger's lust but i will use one global for two people so may as well do it that way all right the tank doesn't really care about it the mage is asking for it but the mage has shimmer so i refuse to give it to them on principle the priest has fade oh the mage is being a little dick but yeah the priest has fade they don't seem to have it phantasm talented they can actually use phantasm to drop but i'll leave it at that um let's see here we're gonna do a pull timer and then we're gonna get started last time was i was in a throne of the tides i did not have a great time so we'll see how it goes this time. The priest said they didn't take it. I said you should. I'm still running the stupid build without blend blinding light, so that's a mistake on my part. You'll see that the uh, health bars are purple now. That is because they don't have... Uh, what's this thing called? Oh no, I just realized. This is... Uh, I'm running the wrong talents. Oh no, many mistakes have been made. And not only because of the repentance that I have instead of blinding light, but also because I'm going to use a defensive here. Ooh, I'm going to use a bubble here, and we're going to help that mage survive. I'm going to sack this person. Priest is blasting the HPS mage. Didn't make it, unfortunately. Maybe should have sacked the mage. That's unfortunate. The mobs kind of died apart from each other, so there was a bit of a, a bit of an issue. 
There's people outside yelling right now, and I want to go yell at them. That's not going to solve anything, is it? A little bit discombobulated because I'm in the wrong talent, so my brain is now focusing on that tirelessly. I, wait, I failed to kick the heel on this thing because I'm not paying attention because I'm talking about how much I'm not paying attention because I'm discombobulated. Are we going to give the tank movement? No, I'm not because he is flying over there already and I'm unable to cast it at him because it's out of line of sight, but okay. Dropping all my cooldowns because the Ravager has a lot of health, even on Tyrannical. I completely forgot that there's going to be a switch to Tyrannical this week, even though the thing reset and everything. I'm going to give this person a sack and heal them up a little bit. There's uh, Judgment coming through from my uh, Resonance, so I'm going to use... I have regular judgment after I consume that judgment debuff, very important. Should be giving the tank the freedom thing. Oh, I am so lost in the sauce. But I'm a red paladin, so there's not much that I'm losing out on by being lost in the sauce, to be honest. I still do crazy, crazy amounts of damage. Although I would really, really like it if I was running a different talent, because I have Searing Light now, which is not horrible, but the Vine Arbiter would do a lot more in the Tyrannical fights. I would actually like it a lot more for the Tyrannical fights. But oh well, what can I do? If the boss fights are partic particularly tricky, I'll have to uh, take some responsibility there. I said focus on one of these casters. I'm going to look to interrupt the heal. There it is. I am... I have aggro, but I also have... thingy thing with the stuffy stuff. I have no bubble available. So I'm unable to drop aggro very quickly. The tank did pick back up, pick aggro back up, so we're good. Three stacks of bursting and we go into the next group, that's fair. Luckily the little guys that jump around don't actually give bursting, that would be... Horrifically bad. Crushing Depths coming in on the Evoker. I trust the healer to take care of that. It's on me now. I'm going to use a big Absorb Shield just so the Priest has a nice big chunk of time. To heal it up in. Yeah, I have a full set of cooldowns available for the next pull, but the next pull is not going to be particularly big, which is disappointing. Unless the tank goes, uh, like, full yellow, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, do we take a Ravager? We do not take Ravager. Okay, so the pull isn't that big, but I will use my cooldowns, otherwise I'll have my cooldowns for far too long. Just sitting there and waiting. Interrupt the next thing I see, which is this. We're going to go ahead and interrupt it like so. This is a lot smoother when it's tyrannical week because you don't fight a boss until way later. We'll get into line of sight so that none of these are casting. I might actually just go out here and kick it, kick Nick's cast, like so. That will make it group up. Now that it's grouped up, I can actually do some damage. Okay, that got interrupted by the evoker. Am I being targeted by these guys? No, I'm not, but the priest is. We're going to go ahead and stun this thing. And then I can kick the next cast, which is this. Okay, there we go. Cooldown's available for the next pull, which is probably going to be the, whatchamacallit, it's the Ravager. Hopefully it's going to be the Ravager. We'll see what the tank decides to pull. It is uh, not fortified, so we can pull just about anything. It looks like it's going to be just the doggos, so that's good. I can bop someone who gets particularly low. I'm going to go ahead and blow up the doggos because it's a big enough pull, enough targets. I'm going to use a defensive of my own. Let's see. Tank can probably handle it himself. Who is getting hunted down? Ooh, okay. The Ravager just came in and gave us a lot of trouble. We're going to lay on hands of the mage. We're going to heal this person. I have a defensive available, but it's not necessary. I'm out of holy power, so I can't really heal. We're good. The Ravager, I don't think, was planned to be part of this pull. I don't know how they got pulled. Maybe somebody accidentally hit them while trying to go for the doggos. Or maybe it just pulled with the doggos. I was standing a bit too close to everyone else there. I should turn on friendly health bars so that I can avoid standing on top of other people. That way I can avoid Acid Barrage hitting everyone, but... 
the rest of the people aren't really repositioning to do anything about it. Mage is standing nice and close to this. So that their zero travel time per pasts can actually hit it faster, I guess. I don't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you. They don't want to use Arcane Explosion. Use all my cooldowns here. Because holding them would be bad, I think. I don't like my commentary this run. I'm still a little bit discombobulated. And it's all because I realized I had the wrong talents. That's just really beautiful. Are you going to cast or nah? There we go. Like, I was just standing there waiting for it to cast. I tried to stun it. I managed to stun it. No heal for you. I have aggro on it, so I'm getting punched in the face. I don't like getting punched in the face. It doesn't feel good. I'm going to interrupt this water bolt so that nobody gets hit by it. Everyone's kind of standing there with all their interrupts available. Luckily, it's tyrannical, so it doesn't matter. Although, it would still be nice if people use their interrupts. It just helps. It's off the global cooldown. You're losing nothing. It's tyrannical, and I feel like this is a really bad idea. What the tank is doing is skipping a trash pack and hoping that we don't reach that trash pack while we do the boss. I don't know about that. We'll see how it goes. My DPS is significantly lower on single target because I have the wrong talents. But we'll see how it works out. I will use all my cooldowns here right at the pull of the boss. Because... I think I'll be able to get the most value out of them. It is tyrannical. It's a 17, so the boss is beefy enough. It's worth using cooldowns on it. Um, sometimes I debate whether I use it on the trash or the boss, but with it being tyrannical, the boss's ability is hurt enough to where you want to make her stop casting by forcing her to go into, into the intermission. I'm going to interrupt this to try and make a group up. I have to be very scared here of the adds. They actually do significant damage. Okay, I was focusing on staying on top of this big ad. We're going to interrupt that as well. No reason to keep letting people get slowed down. It's hard enough to avoid these stupid gazers. Okay. And now we can. Focus on dropping all of our cooldowns on the boss again. We're going to give freedom to the tank. I don't have to worry too much about getting killed by the uh, thingy thing with the stuffy stuff. The focus tempest. So I didn't use a defensive there. If I get the big circle though, I will use a defensive. I overlapped two of my judgments there and I really don't like that. That's a significant DPS loss. I'm trying to put my expurgation on as many people as possible or as many enemies as possible. I'm trying to figure out where the tank wants to position these mobs, but I'm unable to, so I'm just going to drop my abilities and hope for the best. And these, uh... Oh, goodness. That was a lot of swirlies on the ground. And I'm not sure whether or not I actually like having the purple health bar thing for expurgation. Because I can't tell whether or not I have aggro on something and whether or not I should be worried about taking damage, so I hesitate on using defensives. I'm going to drop all my cooldowns and hopefully I'll have them back up for the next boss because we're going to probably bloodlust the next boss. I'm going to kick this water bolt so it doesn't kill someone. I managed to get my expurgation back up on the boss before my uh, Divine Resonance Judgment went out and hit the enemy. I overlapped a Divine Resonance Judgment with my own, but it doesn't matter too much and boss is dead. I have 40 seconds of my cooldowns, or 40 seconds until I have my cooldowns again. Uh, I should be able to get a bit of value out of Bloodlust with my cooldowns, depending on how quickly we start the fight and whether or not the mage actually uses it right on pull. Yes, I know. You left them there. I guess he's still warning us. Uh, we should be starting at this pillar just so we have more space. But, okay. Bloodlust, please. Please don't make me use drums. I'm going to go ahead and use drums because the mage is probably has it on cooldown. Because they probably used it for themselves in the last boss fight. And now they don't have it off cooldown. 
How do I know this? Because I did similar mistakes when I was playing my mage. We have these uh, these guys coming back up, so we're going to try and hit them with abilities. That way they get knocked back. The evoker's all on top of that. It looks like he's... Is he augmentation? He is augmentation. That's okay. He can take care of that then. I don't have to waste my damage. Although, to be fair, uh, the blobs do take damage. They just have a lot of health. <clears throat> so if you can hit them, they will take full damage from your abilities. So you can actually pad DPS and it can look like you're doing good DPS like me right now. Positioning here is a little bit confusing. Monk has red stagger, doesn't use his thing for a while. I have another set of cooldowns available. Ooze is awakening. Hopefully I don't have an issue with that. I'm going to point my thingy thing at them. My thingy thing, I mean my wake of ashes. We have a person down, which is the mage. I'm going to try and hit these because they're really causing some issues here. I'm going to CR because this is a boss fight. I don't have my intercession on my buyers. Why? Because I had to reset my macros. I am the only CR. I need to open up my spell book. Now I'm doing something that I make fun of people doing in the middle of fights. I'm going to give CR by opening the spell book. I usually make jokes about people who are very slow to do something. That they open up their spell book and look for the spell. That's literally what I just did. Luckily I found it quickly because it was highlighted since it wasn't on my bars. And we just got knocked into these ads, so... Let's just say I'm glad I have Repentance. There we go. That is a lot of ads. Okay, I don't know how this is going to go. We got a little bit lucky. We're going to interrupt this. Never mind the... Dragon decided to stun it, but now it's just the ads. Okay, that's that was messy, and this is exactly what I was worried about, which is we uh, ran into these mobs while trying to fight the boss because we didn't clear them because it's tyrannical. You can get away with doing that on Fortified because the boss is obviously easier to kill and faster to kill. So you have enough time to kite them around the room before you reach those. We also wouldn't have done that if we started at this pillar instead of this pillar, but oh well. Ah, okay. So what I think I'm going to do now is, while I'm waiting here between these, I'm going to go to modding real quick. Okay, that's good. Are we going to get rid of don't have expurgation? Very nice. That way, the health bars will actually be red when I have aggro, and that way I can react accordingly. I can probably fix it and make the red override the purple, so that I don't care if they have expurgation, as long as they actually show me who they're aggroed to. It'd be really cool if people use their interrupts here. I'm going to use all my cooldowns because this is a big enough pull. I'm going to move out of that, though. I'm trying to kill the casters off first. Bit of a messy pull, but for me. But I think partially it is due to the fact that I didn't have a Divine Steed to go charging in there because I was busy. Set oh, excuse me. Setting up my Plater profile. Or not my profile, I guess. The Plater modding thing. I had to remove the mod. Let me get out of that before I get murdered. Give Tank the movement speed so he gets rid of the entangling. I really should give it to someone else than the Tank. The Tank keeps using Tiger's Lust. But my macro is already made. Uh, we're going to copy the priest's name. Do -do 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 -do. Copy character name. We're going to go into this macro. And we're fighting so I can't. But I'm just going to be a douchebag. And I'm going to edit macros in the middle of the run. There we go. Wake of Ashes, wasted because they didn't have wings. Wings was coming up shortly. There we go, Priest. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Now I have all my cooldowns available, but the pack is almost dead, so I kind of don't want to use it. And I want them to sync back up. I'm going to heal myself, then I'm going to heal the... I don't need to do that. Target's not in line of sight because we're fighting on the middle of the stairs. That's not great. Okay, and we're done with that. I jumped down the stairs, they went up the stairs, I have to use Divine Steed to catch up. Ah. The group's doing actually really, really well. I should point that out. And the group's doing just fine. I'm the one that's just lost in the sauce right now. I got silenced. I don't know if you saw the bar or the line thing, but I sure as heck didn't. Big heals for the group. I'm going to use a shield to absorb that. This is a little bit... Uh, I'm a little bit iffy on this one, boss. He pulled the... Uh, two seers and these guys so what's going to happen is we're going to get mind flayed while we're trying to whatchamacallit run away from that clinching fist thing 
and that's going to cause some issues because it's going to be harder to move away because you're slowed while you're mi being mind flamed. And the entire time the melee can't actually interrupt. So I'm going to try and kill the mind seer thingies first. Oh man. Freedom to the priest. Should have probably switched that right at the start of the dungeon, but oh well, what can you do? Very messy. I'm not happy with my gameplay this run. I'm really not happy with my gameplay this run. But I'll tell myself I'm doing well because I have a bunch of interrupts while well, nobody else does. Not that it matters, but I'm going to use just Wake of Ashes here because it is, for it is not fortified. It is tyrannical. So I don't really care about how quickly we kill these guys. I care much more about how quickly we're going to kill the boss. So I want to save my cooldowns for the boss fight rather than this. There we go. I'm going to use a big defensive here. Try and help with some healing for the Sanguini. Very good. And MD just came off cooldown. So it would have been nice if he had it there. But no big deal. We are ready to go. Priest needed a bit of mana. Okay. Well, I'm going to drop all of my cooldowns. Although... You could make an argument for it being better if I save the cooldowns for whatchamacallsets. For the totem. There's the totem. We're going to use the mind toll. And try and kill it as quickly as humanly possible. There we go. I'm going to stand on top of the tank. That way we leave as much room as possible. Beautiful. I think spinning around in circles. I'm trying to not get parried, but... Uh, Okay, now they're standing still, so we're good. We need to give freedom to the priest. The priest doesn't have to run around. Totem's coming down here in a second. We're going to switch to it immediately because that's a big threat to our tank's life. Don't want our tank to die. There we go. Totem's gone. We're safe. We're going to try and use a defensive as soon as we get hit by the flame shock. It's the priest that's currently hit by the flame shock. We'll give them a nice big sack to make it easier for them. Another totem's coming down soon. I'm going to use all my cooldowns on the totem. Wake of Ashes should kill the totem very quickly. I'm using an absorb shield because I have the dot on myself. The dot does ridiculous amounts of damage, so it's very good to use a defensive whenever you get it. Especially if you know that the priest can't dispel because they just dispelled somebody else or something like that. Or if you're on comms with the priest. I say priest, but the healer is what I mean. Use another defensive. We can give freedom to the priest and myself. And now we can switch to second phase, which is the easy phase. We just need to hide. Ooh, what the heck? Did you see that? I jumped over the middle here, so it kept me moving. Like, I was flying through the air. It was super annoying. I swear that's what happened. I know that I need to stand behind that pillar so I can hide. Not stupid. <laughs> it's just really stupidly executed. Four, three, two, See, like right now, I'm hiding from it and I'm nice and safe. And the priest is hiding behind that big pillar back there, so I wasn't able to give them freedom. And the boss is dead. I don't even want to use cooldowns on this because I know we're going to fight a big pack of trash coming up next, so. There we go. Very messy. Very annoying. Again, I just keep making really stupid mistakes. The first mistake I made was not having Blinding Light. The second mistake was not having Divine Arbiter while having Searing Light. But oh well. Truth's Wake does seem to do more damage than Searing uh, Light. So I will not drop Truth's Wake for Divine Arbiter and Searing Light. I think I'm better off just having... Uh, Dropping Searing Light, keeping Truth's Wake, and doing Divine Arbiter instead. I think that's the call. Another Charge of Divine Steed. We're going to put one of these casters on focus so that I can interrupt them. The one that I put on focus got interrupted, so we're going to interrupt the other one. Give freedom to the Priest. Priest is busy healing. Doesn't need to do movement as well. We're going to stun this so the Aqua Blast doesn't kill anyone. And we're good to go. Quick cleanse for the tank. Never mind. Right as I cleanse, another freaking dot shows up or I should say poison now we'll see how the tank handles this um it's freaking what we call it tyrannical so I don't really care I'm gonna give the priest a quick cleanse okay I'm gonna taunt this because the mage is blasting DPS into it and ripped aggro off of the guy the tank this is a shit show. I'm going to bubble and I'm going to sack the priest because I don't know how to stop all these casts. I just wasted my interrupt here. 
We're going to... Ugh, they got knocked up. This is a mess. We're going to cleanse the mage. Then maybe the mage survives. We're going to use a defensive. This was a horrible pull. I don't know why the tank did this. I'm going to give freedom to the priest and myself. I'm going to interrupt this and we should be okay now. I'm going to drop all my cooldowns. Then I'll have it again for the boss most likely. That was really, really weird. That was a weird pull, but we managed to get through thanks to this priest's ridiculous HPS. This priest is the MVP of this run. It sure as heck isn't me. Now we're going to pull a bunch of corruptions into the sentries just so that the priest can prove to us yet again that he's going to carry this run. I didn't use Divine Toll because I'm stupid, so I'm going to use it now. I won't have it for the boss, but that's okay. Manage. Priest is going to get cleansed. I'm going to heal myself. See, this is what happens when you pull Corruptions into the sentries. Corruptions, when they die, they apply a disease debuff to you. The disease, what it does, is it increases the shadow damage taken by 10% while also doing some, like, explosion damage when you die. I'm gonna kill this and I'm gonna try and res the other person. I don't want to use a CR here. There we go, we've used that. We're going to res now. Priest can drink while I res. There we go. Smart move by the Evoker to not release because they would have to run through corruptions and we would have to, uh, whatchamacallit, we'd have to fight those corruptions. All right, let's see if we use Lust this time. Give freedom to the priest. Lust. Do I have to use the freaking? I'm going to use drums. I don't care. Neither of the people that can do Lust are you doing Lust, so I'm going to go ahead. The Evoker is moving into that patch. The Mage should move some more into this patch. I'm not feeling very confident about this being a good uh, a good pull because people are very very slacky about moving into the uh, cleanses. And they're also not dropping them on top of the existing ones. This one didn't get cleared. This is... Either we're going to clutch this with a shit ton of DPS or we're going to have a very hard time and wipe. We'll see which one it is in a second. How this next cleanse goes is going to determine whether or not we do this successfully. Mage needs to move with me, otherwise we're not going to cleanse it. I don't care about your casts, mage. You either... Mm, yeah, this is not going to go well. We need to stack on top of the mage, otherwise we won't cleanse this. If we don't cleanse this, we'll probably wipe. Looks like I'm most likely a wipe. We're going to interrupt this, and then when they stack up, I'm going to drop all my cooldowns on them again. Okay. I'm trying to drop this as close as I can to that so that we can actually cleanse everything. This is not going well. This is this is a wipe. There's not going to be any space left soon. I'm going to try and clear some space next to the boss. The mage is focus more on their freaking casts than they are on the cleansing. We should really focus on the cleansing. We're barely managing to stay in it. I don't like this. It might be doable. Might be doable. I'm going to use a defensive and stand on top of this. Just so I can save some space and make the cleansing a little bit easier. Boss is almost dead. I'm going to bubble and then I'm going to drop all my shit. Give the priest freedom so he can move around more easily. Boss needs to die now. Okay, we managed to get through it. I was a lot more nervous than I needed to be, apparently, but that was not well executed. We got through it purely because we do a shit ton of damage, not because we did this really, really well. And that is a 17th throne of the tides. Plus two. That was stressful at the end there, but we did well enough. And I got a hero tier chest piece, which is an upgrade from my eight out of eight veteran piece. Pretty nice. I'll go terrify that immediately. And we'll get a portal. We didn't get any time warps from the mage other than at the very start of the dungeon, but at least we get a portal. To be fair, the team played really, really well other than the positioning on this last boss fight. Like we had a uh, circle go off all the way in the back, which was not exactly great. And then the cleansing wasn't being focused. We were focusing on the damage, but it's hard to do damage if you're dead. So I'm glad that the mage focused enough to get us through to the point where we actually kill the boss. I genuinely thought we were going to wipe on that last pull or last boss, I should say. But we got through. We did well enough. It would have been nice if he had a few more kicks, but the priest was able to keep us alive through all of those things we didn't kick. I'm surprised I had this many kicks, to be honest with you. But I guess it worked 
worked out. Now I'm going to quickly change to Blinding Light for my Fortified build, and I'm going to switch to my Tyrannical build. Actually, I don't need Turn Undead, do I? I'm going to drop that as well, and I'm going to grab this, which I'm going to call it's Fist of Justice. That'll lower the cooldown on my uh, Hammer of Justice, which means I can do more CC, which means I can probably prevent some stuff that other people don't interrupt. We're going to switch to the Tyrannical build. It is still running the uh, Searing Light instead of Truth's Wake. I did that when I was doing lower keys because the Truth's Wake didn't actually have time to do the full amount of damage because the mobs would die too quickly. Now I'm going to switch to Truth's Wake because it does more than Searing Light. As you could see from here, if I take a look here, you can see, hold on, hold on, Searing Light did 9.4 million and Truth's Wake did 10.16 million. So you can see that Searing Light does less damage than Truth's Wake. So it's better to drop Searing Light for Truth's Wake than it is to drop Truth's Wake to have both Divine Arbiter and Searing Light. Now, whether or not Divine Arbiter does more damage than Searing Light, I do not know. What I do know is that Divine Arbiter is better to have on Tyrannical because you're really going to struggle more to get through the, uh, whatchamacallits, the boss fights than you will through the trash fights. So it's best to just have Divine Arbiter for Tyrannical Week. Now I'm going to go Tyrify this chest piece. And what key did I get? I got a Dark Heart Thicket 19. I feel like it's going to be a struggle to get through the 19. Or not get through it. Sorry, that's the wrong thing that I'm not trying to say. Uh, it's going to be a struggle to form a group for for it because you know it's just hard so i think i'm gonna stop right here and i'm gonna give you guys a choice i guess of sorts could i switch to holy learn a bit by doing some lower keys and then i can actually execute this series a bit better which what i mean by that is if i'm holy i'm a healer obviously and as a healer i'll have more people trying to apply to my group because they know that the group will be formed more quickly and then i will have more applicants to choose from so i can actually pick the lowest rated people instead of just picking one of the the three people that apply throughout the course of me forming a group because there's basically I need four people to form the group and there's about five to six applicants and then I you know I guess it's really not the point of the series is it so let me know what you guys think let me know if I should switch to holy so that I can try and you know get more applicants or if I should just stay retribution and you know keep going the way I'm going so far but that's pretty much it for this episode if you enjoyed it drop a like let me know what you liked about it in a comment if you had fun make sure you subscribe because there's more episodes and series coming and if you're feeling particularly generous you can become a channel member channel members have guaranteed replies to their comments and they get nice little shout outs like Sebe got today but as always thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode And I was lost in the sauce in this run.